and will require the disturbance of soil and vegetation that could result in erosion. Six, the application substantially complies with Section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Dr. Craig Johnson for site plan review of a 1,543 square foot addition to the existing medical office building and a new two-car garage located at 1226 Shore Road be approved, subject to the following conditions. One, that all the plantings located in the 50-foot wide setback be installed prior to the issuance of a building permit or any alteration of the site in preparation for the construction of the addition or the garage. If the plantings are not installed by December 15th, planting shall occur no sooner than after the winter frost leaves the ground and construction of the addition and or garage shall be delayed until the plantings are in place. Two, that the applicant shall post a performance guarantee for the landscaping for a minimum duration of one year in an amount adequate to cover at least 30% of the first phase of the landscaping buffer in a form acceptable to the town attorney, an amount acceptable to the town engineer and all approved by the town manager. Three, that an erosion control plan be submitted for the site. Excuse me, I'm gonna delete three uh, that I just read. Three, that the plans be revised to reflect the comments of the town engineer's letter dated August 9, 2004 with the exception of paragraph three of that letter, and four, that there be no issuance of a building permit or alteration of the site until the above conditions have been satisfied. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion on the motion, Maureen? I believe the applicant has asked for the opportunity to phase the project so that apparently there's landscaping shown on in the side buffer that would be planted once landscaping would be removed for the construction of the garage. And I have been told, and let me ask you, Mark, that red line on the plan, does that accurately reflect the, the limit of the vegetation that's already been removed from the site? Uh, that uh, reflects the, the actual, well, there's a little bit of clearing that happened right in here, but once you get to these two trees, now this, is, this is sort of the boundary between some distinct clusters of evergreens. Uh, material on the site has been removed as far as right here, about another 10, 10 or 15 feet. Uh, this is an easy point uh, to, to locate on the site since it goes from a large uh, uh, deciduous tree that's remaining here uh, to the corner of the Rand's garage and encompasses all of the landscaping uh, that's between their backyard and their house and the main addition. Uh, as, as well as being uh, sort of in, in sort of distinct clumps of evergreens. Is there anything new that's proposed to be planted in that 10-foot area that's the limit of the clearing versus where your red line is? Uh, yes, we have a, a cluster here of three PP, three green spruces. So you might be willing to move that red line 10 feet south? Uh, yes. If that's the case, the board may want to consider another motion that recognizes phasing of this project where all of the landscaping that's shown on the plan that's in within the previously disturbed area would be part of your approval tonight, and then all the landscaping for, quote, the garage area my understanding is that the new landscaping that's proposed for the garage area would only be planted if existing vegetation was removed. So if you require all the, vegeta all the new plantings to happen tonight, you're actually going to require them to remove more, more ex existing vegetation out there. I'm wondering if on the plans you could delineate phase one of the, of the landscaping buffer, and then that we could simply amend paragraph one of the conditions that to read that all the plantings located in the 50-foot wide setback delineated in phase one of the landscaping plan be installed prior to and then just continue on and I did make a reference in the second condition is that I thought that the performance guarantee ought to only apply to 30 percent of phase one of the right. landscaping so I, I caught it at least with respect to one of the conditions but not the first one is that that would be acceptable I'll just 
for reference, the, the new line might be a little bit more than 10 feet, but it would be easy to see on the site. Uh, this is a fairly large, distinctive uh, double trunk white pine that's very tall on one side, and that would then correspond to the, to the back corner of the Rand's garage as opposed to the, to the front corner. If we call it phase one, is that going to be good enough from your standpoint? And the applicant will just submit a plan that shows phase one. Phase, I'll make right. sure that it reflects what he's just told us now. Okay. You want to amend the motion? Sure. The only amendment uh, would be with respect to condition number one, which would read as follows, that all the plantings located in the 50-foot-wide setback delineated as phase one in the plans be installed prior to the issuance of a building permit or any alteration, then it just continues on as previously worded. And then two, you also have to have phase one. I, I actually, I think I did include uh, language to cover that issue. Yeah, I think it. Um, one, didn't it? That the applicant shall post a performance guarantee for the landscaping for a minimum duration of one year in an amount adequate to cover phase one of the landscaping buffer in a form acceptable. 30% of the amount. Excuse me, right, I'm sorry. In an amount adequate to cover at least 30% of phase one of the landscaping buffer. So the motion as amended, we have a second? Second. Right. Any further discussion? Okay. Now, we're voting on the whole motion as amended, so everybody remembers. All in favor? None opposed. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the uh, HMH Limited Partnership request for site plan review of an expansion of the Inn by the Sea located at 40 Bowery Beach Road. And this will be reviewed in compliance with Section 19-9 site plan regulations. Um, I would remind the board that uh, this application is before us first tonight for a decision on completeness only. Uh, we then should discuss whether we wish to have a site walk and or a public hearing. And then at the close of the discussion on that, we can decide where we want to go with the application. So with that, uh, we'd love to hear from the applicant as to status of the project, and then we will discuss the issue of completeness of the application. Good evening. Thank you. 
My name is Scott Tees, Principal of uh, PFH Architects in Portland. With me here this evening is Marie McQuay, who's a uh, managing partner in By the Sea. Uh, we have Ray Schinberg, who is construction manager for Olympia Equities, Steve Bradstreet uh, from Aquarium of Engineering, and Al Frick from um, Frick Associates. So well, hopefully if there are questions, we have uh, the, the team here to answer uh, any that might arise. I would turn your attention uh, to Division 6 of our uh, presentation, uh, our application, and basically it goes through nine components of the application. Uh, item number one is the addition of six new rooms in addition uh, on the easterly side of the existing uh, project. And you can see that, I apologize for this, it's not up, but you can see it. Uh, you can see that essentially to the easterly side of the existing inn. Uh, there's a proposed, uh, on the lower level, uh, an additional uh, about 1,800 square feet, I'm sorry, 1,180 square feet of a, moody, of a meeting room. And that meeting room is somewhat less than the existing meeting room in, in the existing building, which will in turn be turned into uh, three additional rooms. Also in that link uh, will be uh, restrooms, which will serve both the new meeting rooms and the existing restaurants. If you're familiar with it, the uh, restrooms are presently located in the lower level. They'll now be brought up, so they'll be much more accessible than they have been in the past. Also, administrative space, kitchen expansion, primarily in the lower level, and a fitness center, a uh, small area uh, in the lower level. Uh, will be set up for uh, therapy rooms and possibly uh, some uh, equipment for working out. Item number two is the extension of the lobby. The lobby uh, is also shaded scan color. Essentially it is uh, moving away from uh, the present entrance toward the, uh, toward the beach. Uh, the application talks about 550 as the, as the design is developed. We actually are going to reduce that, um, probably not uh, anything more than about 300 square feet. But essentially, uh, the existing lobby will be expanded essentially to make it more functional and to have a waiting space. Item number three talks about the three existing guest rooms in the place of on the second floor in the place of the existing meeting rooms which will be now located in the addition. Um, also, in the renovations, it doesn't articulate that, but the upper level is a meeting room. That will be converted into two additional rooms. That's how the count essentially um, rises to the proposed 11 new rooms. The parking lot, in order to accommodate those rooms, will also be expanded. We're proposing to take the tennis court and remove the tennis court in its place uh, create 13 new spaces, and you can see that essentially in this tan area over to the uh, left hand side. Item number five is um, the upgrade of the solid waste, the, the trash that is generated. And there's now a building which sits in the middle of the parking lot. Uh, we'll upgrade the siding on that and also do additional planning to buffer it. Six is the vehicular entrance uh, from Bowery Beach Road. Uh, we're looking at cobblestones at the entrance, uh, essentially to slow down traffic. So it'll be a textured surface um, and some upgrading of plantings as well. Actually, the seven and eight uh, refer to uh, the trees along the road, which is an extension of the trees, which uh, really begin down the Sprague property. You can see those marching across the, the front. Uh, and overall upgrade of landscaping, uh, uh, primarily as seen from Bowery Beach Road. Uh, the one last item has to do with, um, presently we have some pump stations in, in what is now the Rose Garden uh, for uh, sanitary sewer, and some of those will be slightly located, moved so that the found they won't interfere with the foundations of the addition. The, uh, 
the, the application, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, it was put together uh, as, a, as the checklist is, um, so that I think uh, we tried to make it as easy as possible to be able to go through and look at each of the items. I know that there have been uh, several issues that have uh, surfaced since we submitted the application. Uh, we have uh, either addressed them or in the preparation of uh, addressing all those items. I do have some additional sheets here which uh, fill in some of those blanks uh, which I prepared to hand, hand out this evening. Yeah. Um, if I could, I'd like to focus on the, uh, again, under the review for completeness, the uh, three of the items that were mentioned by the town engineer. Perhaps you can address those. The overflow parking spaces uh, added to the site plan, uh, request for a waiver of the stormwater uh, calculations and then a table to accompany the landscaping plan regarding the number of plantings. Those are the three issues I picked up um, regarding completeness. Yes. I just want to clarify that third item, the landscaping plan. There is a table on the plan, but it doesn't list the quantity, so they are a lot more complete than I had originally noted. But. I would still recommend that perhaps in a future submission they could put together a, a, a list of the total number of each type of plant that they would propose to plant on okay. the site. Uh, I do have with me this evening um, an adjusted plan, essentially, that does um, have a planning schedule on it with quantities, so I'm prepared to end that in a second. I'll just set them up here. Thank you. Um, if I may, I'll just go through the response. Um, I also had uh, drawings of, uh, there was an issue of the interface of the light fixtures with the sanitary. This was something that the uh, host engineering brought up. Uh, we have addressed that, so I will also hand that out. Uh, with regards to the parking, as you may be aware, we did show parking of previous plans that the city uh, indicated that they would not address uh, and count as part of the parking plan. And so it was based on uh, our review of previous submissions that they were eliminated from the plan, but they are very easily put back on the plan and certainly could be resubmitted. Uh, we have not done anything to the design to uh, change the disposition of that particular piece of property where we had uh, previously shown an overflow parking. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, the third item was, or fourth item? Well, there was an issue uh, regarding a request for a waiver of the calculations stormwater plan. If I may, Steve, would you take that? Steve Bradstreet. Good evening. My name is Steve Bradstreet with Aquarian Engineering Services. Uh, in regards to the stormwater management evaluation, the uh, the site with the existing tennis court uh, that will be removed and then some additional uh, spaces, 13 uh, parking spaces in that area does not take up the full area of the, uh, the tennis court. So there's um, a credit there, so to speak, uh, with what we'd be putting back into lawn area or landscaping. The area that is uh, where the building expansion is um, does go into the rose garden area, so it does take out of some landscaped area. Uh, in the uh, package, we put together a uh, table of um, the existing impervious or paved areas, and what would uh, be proposed is a, uh, a minimal increase of 352 square feet, roughly an area of 18 feet by 18 feet um, of additional um, paved area or impervious area, not just necessarily paved. It could be the building or it could be the parking lot. Um, based on that small increase, compared to the entire site, um, it would not even be measurable from stormwater calculations in that. And I had a discussion with Steve Hiding in regards to that, um, and he did agree uh, with my evaluation that um, uh, it is a minimal increase and would not uh, have any impact on this project. Thank you. Yeah. Or, I believe Steve Harden, number two on his in his 
letter to Maureen states that. Okay. So if he's happy, I'm happy. All right, any other questions from the board? Again, only on the issue of completeness of the application. We have a motion. Well, before we do that, I guess we, should, we can hit everything all at once. I, it's my view that uh, given the fact that this is a, obviously a prominent building and business in, in town and there are butters uh, that have expressed some concerns that a public hearing should be scheduled. Um, uh, site block, uh, I guess I'd leave it up to the rest of the board. If, if we didn't have one, that would be fine with me, but if we, if we did, I would attend. So well, I'll leave that one up to everybody. Barbara. You know, I know that we're all familiar with the site, but it almost seems that because it is a very prominent building, in this community that perhaps it's in our best interest to go ahead and meet at the site just to see where everything's going to be. And, uh, I know that takes our time, but I just think that it may be prudent of us to do that. I don't know how everybody else feels. I'm, I'd be inclined not to have a site walk, but I don't have a huge objection to having one. I agree with Barbara that it's a prominent building, a prominent business in town. I think we should be as complete as possible in our view. Okay. Do I have a motion then on completeness? If motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of HMH Limited Partnership for an expansion of the Inn by the Sea located at 40 Bowery Beach Road be deemed complete. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Um, Let's talk about the sidewalk then. As in when this would be, huh? Why do you say that? Um, this would come up when? Let's start with weekend versus during the week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll narrow it down from there. I'm out of town from the 12th until the afternoon of the 19th, so. Okay. We'll probably have it before the 12th. I'll be out of town for a too. Have we determined whether everybody agrees? I mean, there, you know, there's one no and a couple of. Okay. We should. As far as I'm concerned, I don't, I don't need a site walk. I go by the building twice a day. Pretty easy to see what they're doing. Yeah. But there are other people. I don't want to make people go out of their way for something that they know. I'm just trying to do that. Peter? My inclination would be to agree with Barbara, but I'm, I'm just trying to see what the purpose is, mostly because it is an existing structure. We are pretty familiar with it, but what are we really looking for and at at the site? But I am concerned about what you're saying, that there are some abutters that have some concerns, and I don't want to have uh, appeared to have shirked something we, may, we might learn out there, but I'm just having a hard time getting a hold of what, it, what are we looking for for this application by going out there. And I don't have an answer to that, which is why I'm thinking no. Not necessary is probably a better word than no for the sidewalk. Before. All right, I'm going to make an executive decision. We'll, we'll have the site walk, and we'll do it um, before the workshop session, which is... That was Maureen. I'd like to take credit, but that was Maureen's idea. Um, so... Can we, can we go while there's a, a functioning process? That's, that's, that's the issue. Uh, I'm not sure what the site walk's going to do. I'll go, but I... 
functions are on weekends. On but, Saturday nights, probably, or Saturday afternoons. Well, that's not really an issue. Yeah, I'm I having a hard think. time uh, seeing why that's relevant, because for this application, right, this, that was this my is different point. than the, the what we saw at the workshop prior to this being at the workshop. Right. This is a proposal to add space. It's yeah. not a proposal to increase. I mean, certainly, you know, that, that's something we can, we can think about, but I don't think we have to schedule the workshop during. Agreed. Yeah. In fact, I want to be careful that that's not what we're looking at in this instance. Right. Well, anyway, um, so 5 o'clock, what, what's the date of the workshop? The workshop's uh, Not 5, the 5th. Yeah, not five o'clock. So six. six. I would say six thirty. Better time. Well, six thirty. This right is not now, a big we're area. There's only one item on the October workshop, so we could delay the workshop till seven thirty. You could start your site walk at six thirty, and that would give you enough travel time. Okay. Okay. So I know we haven't asked the applicant, but I guess Some by default you just have to be there at six thirty on October. Fifth. Fifth. That's okay. I'm sure out of all of you, somebody could be there. Okay. Um, we need another motion. Well, yes, Dave. Uh, did you decide on a hearing or not? Um, I, I think we are going to have one, but we need a motion to do that because it wasn't included in the prior one. Chairman, I have a motion for the board to consider the in further order of the above project to cater to the regular October 19, 2004 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. Second. Moving seconded. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right, the next item on the agenda is a requested amendment to the BA district to clarify that dwelling units are permitted use and the request will be reviewed for the BB district. What are we doing first? Oh, okay, sorry. The papers were out of order. I'm sorry. Um, I. I reversed our zoning district amendments. Uh, the first one will be a request by the Murray family regarding rezoning of DB zoning district uh, for a gravel pit located at 31 Fowler Road to per permit relocation of the contracting office currently located at 1230 Shore Road to the Fowler Road site. Um, these activities are both not conforming uses, so the amendments include rezoning the gravel pit from the RA district to the BB district and expanding the BB district to make earthwork operations a permitted use. Uh, the map and ordinance, zoning map and ordinance will be reviewed in compliance with section 19-10-3. Uh, this is on tonight for a public hearing, so First, Will, Maureen, can you summarize where we are on this amendment? I, I will say, for the record, for anyone that's here for this, that we have discussed this at length at more than one workshop, and, uh, with, and the applicant has been very involved and very uh, cooperative in this uh, analysis, so uh, we, we have given this a lot of time and attention. Go ahead, Marie. Certainly. Uh, this was a request from the Murray family to the council, referred to the planning board. Um, there was not a specific way to handle uh, the request, so the, the board made a choice to go ahead with the idea of rezoning the gravel pit to the business B district. And then to the text of the zoning ordinance, 
add whatever language that was needed to make the activities that are at the gravel pit a permitted use, and at the same time to add some specific uh, setbacks tailored to that use to make sure you had adequate buffers for the abutters. Uh, so what you're looking at is a, a map amendment and a text amendment to the business B district. Uh, and as the chair stated, I think you've had this on your workshop agenda since at least June. So it, you've seen it for, I believe, three or four show, workshops minimum. And the text before you tonight is the same text that you saw at the last month's meeting with one correction that the minimum lot size was changed from what was proposed 15 acres to 20 acres. Other than that, it's, it's the same text that you've seen. Any questions? I just I have a couple. Um, well, one question was... Um, this is permitted use with site planning, correct? Correct. Okay. I just want that clarified for the record. You can't go just start this up. You still have to come before us <laughs> and, and get your site plan and, and approved and first. Right. And make that clear. On, that's funny. On the draft in front of you on page 7, um, and it's not, it doesn't have a line under site plan review line 3, you can see the earth Earth contractor has been added to the list of things that are explicitly requiring site plan review. Well, and that's that's one of the questions I had, and it's it's mostly a terminology question. Is should this be earthwork contractor's yard under the uses under B three uh, two four rather than earthwork contractor? And I, I'm just trying to be consistent through what we're using, and the use is the yard itself. I, I tried to follow, you know, the the. the general gist of what each one was and you've got you know uh, storage and selling a, a stable in the yard itself rather than the I mean I'm, I'm not wedded to it it just seemed to make more sense to change all of those to earthwork contractors yard and then on the last one it seems to have either or under 10 and it should be just one of them I would think just earth, earthwork contractors yard Okay. Those are my only two questions. And on page seven, you wanted to say earthwork contractor's yard. Right. Okay, everybody have those changes? Uh, this is scheduled for public hearing, so we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we can go back to a discussion of the, uh, of the draft. So I'll open the public hearing. Ask that anyone that wishes to speak, please approach the lectern and identify yourselves and where you live, and we'd be happy to hear from you on this application. Okay. Close the public hearing. And is there a discussion of the amendment? Uh, now, Peter, these are revision, proposed revisions to the draft that you've suggested. Right. Just changing those, the terminology. Okay. Um, again, we've spent a lot of time on this, and I think everyone here has put in, uh, had some very good ideas and suggestions, and we've also heard from the applicant who has also had some very good ideas and suggestions and has also been very uh, cooperative. We've heard from abutters. Um, we've uh, gone on a very extensive site walk with the abutters and listened to their concerns. So um, I'm satisfied that the draft we have now with the last minute amendments, uh, Mr. Hayden, are, are it is is something that I would recommend to the town council. Um, but if there's further discussion, I'd be happy to hear it, David. I don't have any discussion. I just wanted to make a motion. That's okay, too. Uh, motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the information submitted and the facts presented, the planning board recommends the BB district zoning ordinance and zoning map Amendments to the Town Council for adoption. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Thank you.
Okay, on to the next district zoning amendment. This is a uh, request by Patrick Associates to amendments to the BA district to clarify that dwelling units are permitted use. This will be reviewed in compliance with section 19-10-3 zoning amendments. Again, I would ask uh, town planner to just summarize the amendment and how it originated. Uh, I would also say that this is something that we have spent time in, in workshop uh, going through and uh, have given it a fair amount of time and attention. But Maureen, if you could. Certainly. Uh, the business aid district is, uh, let's put it this way, when the town center district was created, there was a lot of new work done in terms of mixed use buildings. And it was adopted and over a period of time, a lot of the new ideas in the, in the town center district became well accepted. And when the zoning ordinance was rewritten in 1997, a lot of those concepts got incorporated into the business aid district as well. Unfortunately, they didn't get totally incorporated into the business aid district. So the business aid district does have a setback for a multifamily, but it doesn't explicitly list multifamily as a permitted use. So what these amendments are intended to do is to kind of fill in the gaps when some of the ideas from the town center district were added to the business aid district. It explicitly lists multifamily as a permitted use in the business aid district. It adds a definition to the ordinance for multifamily, which dif differentiates it from multiplex, which for a time they were considered the same kind of thing and we were going back and forth and being not quite um, as disciplined as we should have been and precise with the language. So. These amendments basically make it explicitly clear that multifamily would be a permitted use in the business aid district. Okay. This is scheduled for public hearing, so I'm going to go ahead and open that public hearing. Uh, if there's anyone here that would like to comment on this proposed amendment, please step forward. One here. Okay. Close the public hearing. And. Uh, again, we have reviewed this. Uh, I, I see this really more as a clarification than a change, uh, and I believe that the reason for it is, is justified uh, to, to clarify a prior drafting that perhaps didn't intend to mean what it, what it meant. So, uh, Barbara. One quick question. I we have the setbacks listed for multiplex, but no setback was listed for multifamily. And since that's another definition, I wonder if we just I should believe, have uh, and I just want to get to that section, that setbacks for all other uses are, are listed, and those are the uses that would apply. So because, yeah, it's on page four. It says minimum setbacks. It says all uses on on the bottom of page four. Unless otherwise specified. All uses unless otherwise specified. So there would be setback requirements for multifamily. We just didn't create anything special for it. So in the multi for a multifamily, the side yard setback would be 25 feet, 50 feet if it abuts a residence district. The rear yard setback would be the same thing. Why is multiplex housing have a greater setback then? Because multiplex housing, I believe, when you read the definition, really contemplates a condominium development. And so they're looking at a large project on a large piece of property with large setbacks. Okay. As opposed to a movie theater, which is what it sounds like, but it's not. I don't like the word, but we won't we won't go there. Um, okay. Uh, is there any other discussion on this? Motion. Always. A motion to be considered by the board be it ordered that based on the information submitted and the facts presented the planning board recommends the BA district zoning amendments to the town council for adoption second all in favor very good motion to adjourn <laughs> I'll move. I'll move in favor, in favor. <laughs> thank you